inspired. Okay, well, Stephen's author of the book on uh, 2025, and he's managed to comb through everything LSA Bailey has penned and found everything possible on that date that uh, she wrote, and he might have come up with something else besides that by now, who knows. So anyway, <laughs> I'll turn it over to you, Stephen, to talk about uh, uh, that, that year, which is apparently going to be an interesting year. Right, thank you. Uh, I don't have any slides as uh, Brother Murray had. Very professional, Murray, thanks. <laughs> So, <laughs> sorry. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to put this down as a really a sort of a, a sharing rather than a, a presentation. Yeah, yeah. Don't feel bad. Nobody else had slides. He's the only one. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Murray. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so, so 2025, and why I have been uh, talking about it for several decades now. Uh, it's, it's something that DK mentions substantially in his books, but actually very few people have actually picked up on and commented on. The last few years, people have been talking out about it a bit more, uh, partly because uh, the book may be, but, but, but also because uh, some of my friends and colleagues and co-workers have begun to talk about it. Philip Lindsay and people like that have begun to mention it uh, the last two or three years. In fact, he's done a very good compilation on 2025. You might want to check out on his site, Esoteric Astrologer. Um, and as we're getting so near, especially the interregnum between 2020 and 2025, I think it's really important to understand what DK was talking about and why it's so important. Because all of the issues that we've got now, COVID, political, fires and all of that stuff all linked to 2025 or certainly the period between now and 2025 and we should ask ourselves why did dk mention it so much i mean he wrote these things back in in, in the 20s and 30s in the 40s why would he talk about 2025 and keep bringing it up in fact dk mentioned it uh, 15 times in his books, in different books. And people tend to just read it and, and, and forget about it. But I think it's a, the most important date of our lifetimes, in fact. Why do I think that? Well, every 100 years, to state the obvious, I know you all know this, but every 100 years, the hierarchy holds... Um, a conclave or a, a, a gathering of all the hier hierarchy members in one place. And it only happens once every hundred years, this conclave. And what does it do? DK says the conclave decides for the future 100 years ahead, what the plan of the hierarchy uh, is. So that sounds pretty important, doesn't it? And DK's books trace back this conclave, if you look for it, going back to 1425. He doesn't have a chapter called 2025 where he puts all the information in one place. You actually have to go out and look for it, which I did. And he mentions every, every conclave from 14, 1425, every single one, uh, is, is, is mentioned. And we, you know, we, we should ask why, why, why that is the case. I mean, 1425, he talks a little bit about uh, the conclave. And this is what he says. I've written down a few quotes for you. He says, this great invocation has been used by the hierarchy ever since the year 1425 though it is thousands of years older than that. Owing, however, to the unreadiness of humanity to cooperate in its use, the results have been delayed and are regarded as hovering. He uses that word hovering. What does that mean? Mm, interesting, huh? But he does mention the first 
uh, well, not, not the first conclave, but certainly the first significant conclave, which is in 1425. And he mentions that in the book, The Externalization of the Hierarchy, page 158, if you're interested in looking it up. And so the Shambhala impact towards 2025 started in 14, 1425 at that date. He then goes on to say, when this shambolic energy impacted our earth, after 1825, much evil was aroused and was burned for the greater, longer good. This was needed to ensure the externalization and reappearance of the world teacher was unimpeded. Same book, page 678. DK goes on to talk about the externalization of the hierarchy starting at, at 2025. Now, many, many people in our genre claim the new age, if you like, or whatever you want to call it, the externalization started in the 1960s. Some people say it started in the 1800s. But DK is quite clear about this. Technically, it starts 2025. That's what he says in the books, it's quite clear. And so I, I, would say, I would say in all probability, it is that the years before that were pre-externalization, if you like, or building up to the externalization of the hierarchy, but not the actual externalization. So the most important conclave next to the next one, which is in four years time, was of course 19, 1925. And I think it's worth looking back to 1925 to find out what happened, what, what significantly took place to further um, focus that that year, the 100 year conclave is important to us. Now, a couple of quotes again from DK. Senior disciples in the major ashrams are now beginning to form subsidiary ashrams, as I began to do in the year 1925, he says. So that's, that's very significant. To this end, the masters put the pers their personal groups of disciples in touch with each other, subjectively, intuitively, and sometimes telepathically. Thus, the new group of world servers came into being. What can we deduce from that? In my opinion, the new group of world servers were formed in 1925. And if that's the case, what can we look forward to in 2025? And we can discuss that a little bit later because we don't really know <laughs> technically, but we can discuss what might happen in 2025. What else happened in 1925? Treaties on Cosmic Fire was published in 1925. And of course that is the second, um, psychological key to the secret doctrine that Dwalakul talked about and it was published in 1925. Um, the other very large um, and huge event that took place was, rev was regarding Krishnamurti uh, who in 1929, only, only four years after 1925, uh, disbanded the Order of the Star. And I think it's worth for a few minutes just talking that over because that is linked very, very closely to 2025. And it's something, again, which people don't often consider. Krishnamurti originally was chosen to be the physical vehicle of Christ or the next world teacher. And that was uh, decided at the previous conclave in 1825. And then of course, Blavatsky came along 1875 and started the Theosophical Society, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There were some issues with the Order of the Star and Krishnamurti, which led the Christ to take the momentous decision as outlined in the books uh, by Edouard Cole, to return 
himself. Himself. Not, we can talk about what that means, but physically. Reappear. Some people say return, reappear, whatever. But because he's has, had his uh, Maya Vayupa here on the earth, technically it's a reappearance, not, not a return. Because he just energizes that and uses it again. And Krishna, when he started to withdraw the energy from Krishnamurti, uh, Krishnamurti went through all sorts of healing crises and things like that, which have been well documented in various books uh, by people around him. Mary Lutyens. Uh, is there a good biography on him that details the, this information? Yes, there is. There's a, there's a very good one uh, called Star in the East. I can't remember the author straight off the top of my head. But Star in the East is a very good book. And also I recommend Mary Lutyens' uh, book, Candles in the Sun. Uh, that's another very good biography. Okay, I have to check that out. Yeah. If you just bear with me, I'll see if I can find the book. I've never read a biography on him. I've read details about him and some of his writings, but... Uh, Let's see if I can... Uh, I'm no expert on him. Star in the East. Oh, okay. It's a very good book. Hmm. Okay. Keep that, I'll write that down. Yeah. Um, I mean, Star in the East doesn't go into the detail that, 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 I've, that I've gone into. I mean, I have got a paper uh, on BBR, which I've outlined my, my theory <laughs> on Krishnamurti. But my working hypothesis is that the, the Christ, the world teacher, withdrew his energy and in 1929, um, Krishnamurti disbanded the Order of the Star and famously said, truth is a pathless land. You all know that saying. And uh, he carried on his work as a sort of world teacher, strangely enough, but, but not in the theosophical traditions that we all know and love. What does that mean? Well, DK then wrote in the 30s uh, and 40s, about the return, the reappearance of the Christ, which is a direct result of, of that event, in my, my opinion. You can make up your own minds by, by reading the books and reading the paper. And so I think most of us accept that the world teacher, uh, aka Christ, Maitreya, etc., will make his reappearance sometime after 2025. But the final decision on when that will be is going to be taken at Wesak 2025. And all of this is supported by the information in the Alice Bailey books. Because it's mentioned 15 times. He doesn't mention 2020. He doesn't mention 2030. He mentions 2025. And we're only four years away. And so I see it as part of my dharma to try to make that uh, more widely known. The other thing worth mentioning in, in 1925 was the work of uh, Helena Rorick and Nicholas Rorick and the, the writing of the Agni Yoga books. The first book, Leaves of Moira's Garden, is dated in, in, in 1924, one year before. And that first book was written by Nicholas Rorick, not by Helena Rorick. I don't know if you, many of you know that. Uh, what the first book ever written uh, with the Master Moya was written by Nicholas Rorick, not by his wife. And then the second volume of um, Leaves of Moya's Garden was published in 1925. And so you can see the link that I'm making there. 1924, I think we'll forgive them for being a year early. <laughs> So 1925 again, started the Agni Yoga books and then they produced the whole sets after that. So Krishnamurti and Agni Yoga, the decision of the world teacher to reappear physically, all link 
to 2025, which is only four years away. And that is all linked to the catastrophes that are happening in our world today, from COVID uh, to all the other stuff that's going on. So before we get into what could happen in, in 2025, does anybody want to ask any questions around what I've said so far? So do you think by 2025, we're gonna have all kinds of false spiritualists claiming to represent the hierarchy showing up? Well, if, if I mean, that's already happened, of course, uh, yeah, you know, many times. Regularly, but I, uh, I, I anticipate there's gonna be a, even more than ever right about that day. <laughs> it, I, I, think, I think that's correct, but, 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 but I think the, the only caveat I would say, I think that's absolutely correct. The only caveat I would say is that most people don't know about the significance of the date. It's yeah, not widely, that's, it's, that's yeah, it's not widely known. I mean, even in our, even our genre, uh, the theosophical genre, shall we call it, spiritual genre, people aren't really talking about it that much. Um, and so they begin, it's beginning to build up. And of course, as we build up towards 2025, next year, 2021, 2022, I mean, things will start to heat up. I mean, my book is selling better now than it was before and blah, blah, blah. Things will, people will start to learn about it. I'm expecting other publications to come out and to start to discuss it as well. Yeah. But for people to be able to claim that they are the world teacher in 2020, they'd have to know about the date. So that's the only, that's the only thing. But, but I think the uh, energy wise, yes, I think all, 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 many people will start to claim that they have connections uh, either with the world teacher, you know, cream style or with masters. Yeah, I think it's going to take a lot of discernment uh, when we reach that day to figure out who's for real and who isn't. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, DK has made it clear that he's not going to be giving out any teachings until after 2025. I and mean, he says that yeah. in, in the books. I mean, he said it's clear. I mean, it's clear. I mean, you know, he said there will be no more. I will, I will give no more dictation, he said, until around 2025. That's what he said. Uh, and people still claimed that, he, that, that they were in contact with him, even though he said he wasn't going to do it. Yeah. So, but, but yes, you are, you, are going to, you are going to get some increase in that as it becomes more pop, popularly known, 2025. I mean, people always latch on to things like that. And I think, I think you know, one, one of my things that I've said on BBR quite often is I think some people genuinely, genuinely connect to the energy of... Uh, a master's ashram. I think it does happen. You know, I mean, people do, obviously, you know, people, people evolve and they start to work and they do have connections. But the problem is that they extrapolate, they extrapolate the connection into being a personal one-to-one tete-a-tete. That's the problem. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's so easy to do. I mean, I've done it myself many years ago when I first started out in the 1980s and I started to work with the ashram energies, you know, there was a there was a time when I felt that I was in con direct contact with uh, Kut Humi, for example. I know it sounds absurd now, but that's that's that was it wasn't just me. I mean, people around me thought that too. Uh, and it wasn't until after you know after a certain amount of teaching and learning and, and getting to understand the energies that I learned that it wasn't the case. Um, that I was I, I I had a connection with one of uh, his his uh, disciples. But it's so easy to have a connection and to get some information and then to extrapolate it into having a cup of tea with Kuhumi, you know, and people do that all the time. So I don't, I, I think it's, I think it's wise we don't just sort of condemn them all as just, you know, being absurd. I think some of it, some of it is absurd, but some of it is genuine uh, connection, but simply extrapolation. That's, that is my, that is my view. Okay. Genuine that shows up, so you never know. Can you share, um, Stephen? Can you share some of your references? I, I know you mentioned a couple pages. Uh, it was, a, I think, an externalization of the hierarchy where he talks about 2025. Yes, um, probably the easiest thing to do is that maybe a little bit later is to write them all down for you. But I, can, I know the page numbers I've given you so far both externalization of the hierarchy. Page one five eight is talking about is talking about fourteen twenty five, and page six seven eight is talking about uh, eighteen twenty five. 
Let's see if I've got any others here. Um, Glamour, page 170. Externalization again, page 530. And Dina, page 64. Dina, <laughs> the Dina, page 64 quote is, senior disciples in the major ashrams are now beginning to form subsidiary ashrams as I began to do in the year 1925. Dina, page 64, that one. Because my personal belief is that four years after this election in this country, there will be a major upheaval. It'd be 2025, I've thought that for some time. So uh, that interests me that you've done so all this research on that date. Yeah, 2024 election is gonna be really <laughs> important to you. <laughs> be very poignant. Hopefully, we'll have one still. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, if we have anything uh, to do with it, we will. Well, it's it's you know, Curtis, it's 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 in it's in the hands of humanity. DK talked about this a lot. He talked about it's the invocation evocation of humanity which will enable the world teacher to reappear. It's humanity has got to do the work. And the reason that we're having problems now, from my, from my um, observation, is because we have not developed the way that DK had thought we would do. I mean, DK, back in the 20s and 30s, he said there was, I think it was 156 initiates in the world he talked about. And he talked about, of those 156 initiates, I can't remember exactly the figure, he said there's like something like 60 or 70 who are useful to him. But then he went on to say that by 2025, there'll be millions of them. Now, he was predicting that if humanity followed the, the trajectory that was decided in 1925, then there would be millions of initiates. He also talked about the World Federation uh, running the world. Do you remember that? He talked about that. He said in 2025, <laughs> The World Federation, of, of talking politically, will be in place. Well, that hasn't happened, has it? So I think that the hierarchy thought that humanity and, and wanted that humanity responded in a much more positive way. Now, because of the problems now, there are sections of humanity which are responding completely appropriately. You know, I mean, there's lots more meditation groups going on. There's lots more reaching out. And so there are positive signs within humanity, in my view, that show that we could get together and we could, you know, basically pull ourselves out of the mire. Um, but, and this is, this is a purely a personal opinion now, so, 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 so please don't um, read anything more into it than that, because I'm only a student as you are. But I, I believe that only an intervention will save humanity. I don't think humanity are going to respond in enough numbers to get the critical mass necessary to save ourselves. It's purely opinion, but my opinion is <laughs> observing, observing and reading, reading the history that we simply haven't done it. And therefore an intervention will have to take place post 2025. And what could that intervention be? Well, DK talked about that too, didn't he? He talked about, we must do certain things to avoid the destruction of humanity. He said those words, is that if we don't do three things, we will not avoid the destruction of humanity. Those three things are, one, a recognition of the world of meaning. Two, a recognition of those who implement world affairs and who engineer those steps which lead mankind towards the destined goal. Three, a steadily increased recognition of the plan on the part of the masses. Esoteric Psychology, Volume One. He goes on to say, the inner structure of the World Federation of Nations will eventually be equally well organized and its outer form rapidly taking place by 2025. Well, it better get going pretty quick, isn't it? We've only got four years to go. Um, there is no sign of a World Federation of Nations. 
There isn't. I mean, united nations we have, but it's completely inept, isn't it? Uh, but those three, going back to those three recognitions, I, I raise them because they are linked in integrally to, to 2025. A recognition of the world of meaning, right? What does that mean? Has anybody got any thoughts on that? A recognition of the world of meaning. DK talks a lot about the world of meaning in his books. Yeah, he does. Uh, basically, it's understanding why things happen the way they do, I guess. Something to that effect. Well, right. it's the world of the soul. Right? The soul. Yeah. Yes. The world of meaning. So what... I think he's suggesting also is that we're living in a world of illusion and delusion. That's my, my understanding of it. And that we have to recognize the meaning behind everything. What's the meaning of what appears to be? Yes, exactly, Edward. That's what it is. And what it's really is. What really is. That's right. That's exactly what it is. The world of meaning. Everything. I mean, people talk about political stuff, they talk about COVID, they talk about all these things, but all these are all effects. They're not meanings. They're all effects of inner energy, everything. And humanity needs to understand that, is, is my, my understanding of what DK is, is, is teaching there. It's not enough to say, oh, well, you know, we feel sorry for koala bears because they're getting burnt in Australia. Yeah, it, of course we do. We, you know, n nobody wants to see fires and earthquakes and political upheavals and revolutions and mad cow disease, bird flu disease, dengue, you know, which is nothing new, is it? This COVID thing, let's be honest. I mean, now, now we've got the COVID. Next year, it'll be something else. And the nature, the world is trying to teach us something about the world of meaning. You know, don't abuse the world. Don't abuse animals. Don't abuse humans, you know. And all of those things that I know every single person on here believes in and believes to be true. And only by tackling the world of meaning and understanding the substance behind the illusion can we move forward. And DK was saying here that if we don't do that, as one of the three recognitions, we cannot avoid the destruction of humanity. The second one then, a recognition of those who implement world affairs and who engineer those steps which lead mankind onward toward its destined goal. So he's talking about the externalization of the hierarchy there, in, in my opinion. Any other opinions on what that, what that means? The second recognition. It's, diff it's difficult, isn't it? But I mean, I think, it's, I think he's talking about um, the hierarchy that stands behind governments, you know? And this is important because we look at world leaders and we say, oh, this person, you know, particularly in America, particularly at the moment, you know, this person's this, this person's that. But that nobody's understanding that politicians have a role too. And they are what we put there, you know, it's not just, and that's not just a democratic thing. That is a, an energy thing. It's, it's, it's the effect of the way that the world is. The leaders it gets. You could say the leaders it deserves, some people might say. And so it's not, it's not, an easy, it's not, not so easy just to look at something and just say, well, we, we don't like Republicans, we're Democrats. That's, that's, that's inane, in my opinion. Because actually, the forces of the hierarchy and the forces of, of evolution work through everybody. Every, every political party and every religion and every thought process. Yes, there precisely. Is... Yeah, precisely, Steve. I think it's not just political leaders. It's leaders everywhere. Uh, in financial areas, in culture, in science and everywhere because the last events in, in a couple of years 
the, Christ, the financial crisis and all that. And we have leaders that have been promoted, even the corporate level, where they, they identify the problem, but they duck under the table, they, they just hide. And you find, you find that everywhere. They don't have the courage to do that. So recognition of the leader, I think, is a sort of precipitation of these people from everywhere that eventually will form the new group of world servers. That is my own personal opinion. I think that's right, Tavi. And I think that the, you picked up on it perfectly that the, the energy comes first and the effect comes second. And it happens, as you pointed out so well, in every field in the world. This is why, and people who know me well know, know that I have an issue with people always talking about some, some political party or some political person or whatever. I, I don't like any of that, only because I only see it as an effect. And all of the leaders who might appear completely destructive and are destructive are still part of the world karmic events going towards 2025, getting back on, on, onto that. And my, my observation is that all of, those, all of those energies working through the world, and at the moment, a lot of them destructively, because we haven't, we haven't, um, we haven't realized the three recognitions uh, appropriately, and they're having a, a destructive uh, effect. So, ergo, what happens in 2025? Are, is humanity in the next four years going to wake up, start to treat animals appropriately, start to harvest appropriately, and human, right human relations will be everywhere. And therefore, we can evoke the Christ and he will reappear after 2025. Is that a practical idea? I, I don't think it is. I think there's going to be pockets of that, and you're one of them. This, your group and my group and there's some other very good groups and there are pockets and these are these these pockets of of, of love uh, and energy can make big changes there's no question about that but can we change enough by 2025 to evoke the world teacher as was written in in dk's books who will respond to that evocation and uh, reappear. I think it's probably unlikely. I hope I'm wrong. You know, I hope I'm wrong. I think it's more likely that the hierarchy will meet, and I don't speak, for, <laughs> I don't speak for, it's just my, my, my observations. Uh, I hope I'm wrong on that, and I hope that, 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 that but I, I, I suspect that they will meet in 2025 at WESAC and make the decision for the world teacher to reappear. I suspect that's what will happen. Um, is this what you see as intervention, as the coming of the world teacher? Yes. Okay. Well, it's either that or destruction of humanity. How, how do you think he would go about uh, preventing the destruction if we are headed that direction? I think it's, I think it's uh, superhuman, if you like, energy transference. I think the, the Bible talks about you know, every eye shall see him and all this sort of stuff. And I think it will be a world event that will happen within the hearts of humanity, actually. I think it will be so, so enormous that people will just sit there and just, you know, get this burst of energy. And what's disconcerting is DK warned that we could actually destroy ourselves. So uh... that's... Yeah, he's learning also, isn't it? Well, this is what he said. If we don't, if we don't, if we don't, um, if we don't live by these three recognitions, then we might not avoid destruction. He says that. Yeah. He yeah. says the words were to avoid the destruction, the total destruction of humanity. Is what he said. But it's funny. Um, places he talks real positive like that's not going to happen at all, and then other times he turns around and gives a stern warning. So it's, it's kind of interesting the way he words things. Well, he does. And that, that's an interesting point because, uh, uh, like, I, like I mentioned earlier, that on, on, in some of his, his uh, teachings, he says there'll be millions of initiates by now. There'll be a world federation of nations by now. People will be talking about healing through electricity and color and sound. Oh, yeah. by 20. 
and that, and that hasn't happened. I mean, it's starting to happen, but please don't misunderstand me. I'm not, I'm just, I'm just saying that a, a fifth degree initiate can't know everything and can't predict everything to 100% because humanity has free will. And DK says that all the way through the books. He says, I'm saying all this, but I can't interfere with the free will of human beings. And he can't. I think, I think what's happened is he was just a little too optimistic on humans yeah. and we're behind schedule, but hopefully we can catch up. Well, he, he was optimistic about several things. I mean, there's certain things like um, the Dina groups. I mean, he was optimistic that those people in those groups, through his personal teachings, would form an outer ashram on the physical plane for the hierarchy. And it didn't happen, did it? It didn't yeah, work. had a handful that worked out to any degree. Yeah. I mean, yeah, well, some, some of it worked and some of it didn't. Some people left, some people were kicked out. Uh, and... Um, and unfortunately, it didn't do what he thought it could do. And it had the potential to do it. And that's, I think that's what he talks about. The potential. The potential in humanity is for millions of people to evoke Christ's reappearance. Of course, the potential's there. But, you know, people have a choice, don't, don't they? I mean, pe people have a choice now. I mean, you've got all sorts of problems in your, in your country. You know, I mean, people are on the streets fighting. You, know, you have a choice. You know, Gandhi had a choice. You know, his choice was... Not to fight, not to battle, but to sit down and to peacefully demonstrate in masses and millions to get the freedom of India, you know, and he did it the right way in my view, you know, but people have a choice. They can go out and smash windows and loot or they can, they can meditate and they can peacefully protest and the people have the, their own personal choice. It's their own self responsibility. It's nobody else's responsibility, how you act, you know, it's not because some, something happened on the streets to somebody else and you've got to go out and hurt people. No, it's, you have a choice, you know? Anyway, so, so that was the, that was the second uh, recognition. And the third one is a steadily increased recognition of the plan on the part of the masses. And he was talking there about obviously people understanding about the externalization process and have a recognition. That's the key word. And again, that hasn't, that hasn't happened yet. It hasn't. I mean, we can't. We, if, I, if I go out in the street today and I say to 10 people, what do you think about the externalization? They're going to wonder what on earth I'm talking about, aren't they? And part of the plan was goodwill. I gave a talk on that uh, what was this morning and we're behind schedule on promoting that also. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was what I was just referring to a minute ago, wasn't it? Goodwill. People have the choice, you know. I mean, goodwill is one, one is, is the sort of lowest, lowest form of love DK talks about, but it's, it's the one thing that he, all humans can, can uh, understand, you know. It's only through love that we're ever going to change this planet. Not emotional love, but in, but in the intuitive love. You know, we just can't do it otherwise. It's impossible. And there are groups like yours, like like mine and like the several others who are trying to ground the light, if you like, without sounding too new agey, to ground the light onto the earth plane. Because I think that all, everybody in your group, in my group, and several other, do, do understand about the, the masters and the externalization and, and, and all that jazz. And so by understanding that, we can impart love and wisdom to other people through group work, mostly, mostly through group work. So I, I've got... Oh, sorry. Sorry, Rick, go on. I was going to say, I've been getting my own personal observations that, that the crowds of people in the world are, are ready to move upward. And, you know, that if only we could get, get rid of all these bureaucrats that nobody elected in the first place, uh, we want to get to the point where we have love for everybody in the world. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's in the hand. I mean, we, we get, we get, well, as, as like I said before, we get what we deserve to a certain extent, Rick, you see, because the, the world, people have not risen up against these bureaucrats, have they? They've not, they're starting to, they're starting to now, but they, you know, they haven't really got their, their act together. And so 2025 is, is, is nearly upon us. We've only got four years left. So let me read another couple of DK quotes. Glamour, page 170. 
I have made this practical application and the immediate illustration of the teaching and then glamour, illusion and maya, because the whole world problem has reached a crisis today and because its clarification will be the outstanding theme of all progress, educational, religious and economic, until 2025, is what he says. Mm. And I'm running out of time, so I'll just, just do one more. Thus, a great and new movement is proceeding, he says and a tremendously in, increased interplay and interaction is taking place. This will go on until 2025. During the years intervening between now and then, very great changes will be seen taking place. We all know about that, right? And at the great general assembly of the hierarchy, held as usual every century in 2025, the date in all probability will be set for the first stage of the externalization of the hierarchy. That's in the book, Externalization of the Hierarchy, page 530. So what can we expect in 2025? I think that it's, it's beholden to all groups to, to sort of make that year a very special year to work towards it and to help build the antikarana of Christ and to be open ourselves up to be prepared for whatever happens between then and now, because there's going to be more cataclysm. There's going to be more issues. There's going to be political upheavals. There's going to be viruses. There's going to be all sorts of earth changes and all sorts of stuff happening. Who knows what's coming, but it's coming, you know, and until, and it really, what, what is it? It's a wake up call, right? It's, you know, we've tried to talk to you. We've sent the signs, we've done the stuff, but you've not woken up to it. So here's a wake up call, bang, bang. Are you awake yet? Bang, bang. That's the problem. And that's gonna be through all, the, all, all, all those channels that um, Terry talked about with cultural, political, religious, on all levels, health, environment, the whole shebang, you know? And 2025 at WESAC, on the 12th of May in 2025, the hierarchy will meet and they will make the final decision on the next hundred years until 2125. What does that mean? It means that the personnel in the hierarchy that DK talked about will change. It changed in 1925. It changed before that. DK talks about KH taking on the mantle of the world teacher and DK will take on the mantle of KH. It's all in the books. And that is going to be post-2025. I'm not suggesting on the day. I mean, I would be <laughs> most surprised if, if suddenly on the 12th of May, all the TV screens went blank and the beautiful light flowed out the TV screens and we all, we all, got, uh, we all became uh, sort of enlightened, so to speak. I don't think that's going to happen. There is an interregnum. There is a, there is a, a time before 2025, when we go through the birth pangs, and there's a time after 2025, probably up to 50 years, I would have thought, maybe more, uh, when the externalization is rolled out. When we see the world teacher himself, I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, there is a possibility it could be 2025. I mean, it, but it's likely, more likely to be after that, I would have thought. I doubt I'll be here, and I doubt many of you will be here, but... I, 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 that's, that's just thinking. I, I don't know. So I see I'm coming up to 59 minutes and 45 seconds. So. Oh, don't worry. About it. It. We're not, we're not black and white on that. Yes, oh, okay. Stephen, Stephen I Hi. just wanted to, to say, you know, I'm in general, I'm inclined to agree with you to some degree, but I have, as much as I'd like to be a mystical occultist, I'm more of an occult mystic, and so I can't not hold out hope. And as ominous an opportunity as the COVID-19 is, for example, I mean, when in your lifetime have you watched advertisements on television that say, we're all in this together? You know, when have you seen, when it happens all the time because of the planet slowing down, 
energetic changes occurring so that mother nature is able to, to normalize a little bit and an incident occurs and there's not response in just this country, but worldwide, you know, so as much as it doesn't look ideal, I, you know, I just to some degree have to hold out hope that there's going to be enough conscious change DK talked about, you know, um, you know, in, in telepathy and a bunch of the other books about, you know, how that would manifest in the future. And really what we're doing right now is like a forerunner of direct telepathic rapport. The internet was created so that, I mean, I have been on three different webinars today with from 20 to 200 people all across the world focusing on manifesting exactly these things we're talking about. And 30 years ago, that didn't happen. So there has been some progress and hopefully the hierarchy will, will deem that you may, there's enough of us that are making the effort that it's, it's necessary now for the Christ to reappear in order to really be able to solidify the changes that humanity needs to take. Yes. I mean, I think that sev several thoughts, I, I understand completely why, why, why you say that. And, and there has been some progress, but I think we should retain uh, um, relativity here. There's 7 billion people on the planet. Seven billion. And you're right, there are, there are groups out there in their hundreds who have hundreds of people. But what is the critical mass required to make the changes? Uh, I mean, really in, in the West, we, we, we have much more going on that you've just described. I mean, I don't know how much is going on in China or Russia or those other countries but very, very little. I mean, I have some friends in Russia and, who are involved in the, our genre, right? And how many millions of, hundreds of millions of people live in Russia? And there's probably about 30 or 40 in the groups. I hate to be depressing, but, but there's not many, <laughs> you know. Right. And, and One of the things I, I feel strongly about is uh, that we got to reach beyond the esoteric groups out to the common man and, and eventually influence him. Like DK said, he was hoping by 1975 we would be on the radio all over the place with esoteric philosophy, and that didn't happen. And uh, so I think uh, I think I think uh, we need the esoteric groups need to reach out beyond themselves a lot more than they've done in the past. Is that's uh, my one of my opinions there. But uh, go ahead. No, I, th I think that's abs absolutely right. I mean, the, the, the changes won't happen just within the esoteric groups. That would be, be madness to, 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 to assume that. But the esoteric groups, from a hierarchical point of view, are the leaders of this spiritual change, uh, that, which, which all of humanity must demonstrate. I mean, obviously, as you've just described. Because DK talked about externalizing ashrams on, on, the, on the physical plane. And there's no doubt that your group, my group, and other groups are part of that externalization. We are part of the externalization. And for, for the energy of the ashram to come via Shambhala down to humanity, it has to go through human beings. And the more human beings who are engaged in group work and in, and in grounding uh, hierarchical energies and distributing hierarchical energies, those energies will then impact upon humanity. It actually doesn't take billions of people to change things, but it does take... A, Sorry? No, I said you're, you're right, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't take billions of people, but it does take, you know, uh, many more than I think that we have now. And that's why, I, and I, I, I sincerely hope I'm, I, I'm wrong and that we make it by ourselves, well, by ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> I, and I, I agree with you too. And that's why it's like every, whenever I do my sacred sound ceremonies, I don't expect people that come and participate to have... Um, you know, be steeped in, in the Bailey 
of Asprey or Ward teachings. However, I will always end my sound healing ceremonies with a great invocation. Yes. So, but there's some exposure, but I'm trying to, to hold that quality of energy, whether they have the understanding or not, and put it out there for people. Yes. Well, don't you think there's enough world tension going on right now to stimulate the consciousness, to raise the consciousness, to get people to think uh, and to move in a, in a positive direction um, that uh, will um, form enough groups that humanity can save itself? Well, that's, 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 what's, that's what's going on, isn't it? I mean, the, the reason we've got these problems, Curtis, is that, is that, is that um, the, the energy of the world is pushing us to do exactly what, what, what you're describing. That the, the important point is about the world of meaning, isn't it? Is that the world karma, the national karma, world karma, our own individual karma, group karma, all of that stuff, is magnetically and energetically pushing us to do what we should be doing, which is exactly what you're, what you're describing. This is the whole point. This is the point about the world of meaning, is that we have to understand that the energy is neutral in a way, if you like, and it's there and it can be used for destructive purposes or purposes of love and understanding. And the more people we get to think about the world of meaning and the three recognitions and the externalization plan and the hierarchy, the more people will be available to ground, if you like, or earth, if you like, that, that energy, that rarefied energy around us. Because if we don't do that, the energy then becomes a destructive um, force, as it is at, at the moment. I mean, there's no doubt about it, that, that the, the hierarchy and the world karma are begging us to wake up and to see what's happening and to do something about it. And it's been going on for years. And some people have woken up, there's no doubt. But billions haven't, you know? And what's the outcome? I mean, I can only, I can only surmise that it's gonna be that the, the, the world teacher reappears and said, okay, enough's enough. You know, if, if, I don't, if I don't reappear, it's over. I mean, some scientists are saying it's over already, already aren't they? I read a scientist the other day, I can't remember his name. And he was saying that, that we've, we've gone past the point of no return environmentally and for, for, for extinction of certain species. We can't, we can't get it back. You know, that's, that's more than one scientist's view. Um, I can only say that I think that the world teacher will walk again on our earth. And I think that every heart shall know him and every eye shall see him. And it will be an inner energetic soul response. But, you know, uh, and I, I guess you could say, you know, uh, the end justifies the means in a way. You know, at the end of the day, if the world teacher returns, he returns either when we invoke him or he comes as part of an intervention, I guess. But, they, but I think the hierarchy were, were, were intending that humanity develop far more than it has and to build the Antikrana, to have a world, a world federation of nations, not to have nations split up by passports and fighting and all this nonsense going on, spending billions on the arms race and all of that jazz. I think the hierarchy was presuming and hoping and encouraging us to go a different course. And we didn't do it. Do you think uh, after World War II, they thought maybe the door to evil was shut a little bit more than it was? Yes. Was yes. Yes, I think that's right. I think, I think that uh, it wasn't shut. Shut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he admitted that it wasn't completely shut, but uh, yeah. uh, maybe they were a little bit too optimistic right after the war. I think they were because it was it was it was a you know I don't I mean we must we must bear in mind that DK as a fifth degree initiate was still uh, like a grain of salt to the to the great cosmic avatars you know I mean I mean we 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 have to understand that when they talk about perfected masters they don't they, yeah, they don't mean not perfect perfect <laughs> no well you know what I mean it, it, perfect in the sense of of, of dominate of, of, of not dominating that's a wrong word uh, of overcoming emotional you yeah. know the most of the emotion and all that stuff. 
So they've done that. So they are perfected masters. But, but DK himself, himself says, he, you know, he can't foretell all the future. If you look at some of his properties, they haven't happened. I mean, look at his own groups I described about 30 minutes ago. Dina didn't work, you know. Um, but one thing that has worked, let's, 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 be, let's be completely positive. I think triangles is the greatest work ever to come out of DK. I yeah. think triangles... Yeah. And the triangle network has saved humanity so far. That's, that's my view, observation. Triangles, I mean, there's, there's, there's not that many of them, but the, there's a few thousand. But the, those, those triangles have earthed the hierarchical energy for many, many years. You know, and it's I, also possible the Internet is more developed than they anticipated, and that could be a positive thing. Well, it's, it's, it's funny you mention that, because the Internet is, is, is really a metaphor, isn't it, for for the spread of goodwill, isn't it? Because everybody, almost everybody has the internet and if they don't have food sometimes, you know. Uh, the internet has spread, I was gonna say like a virus, that's so probably not a good choice of words, but, 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 you, but you get my point, you know. It's spread throughout uh, humanity and most people are in some way connected and, and an event that happens in Africa is on our screens within 10 minutes, yeah. you know. So, so actually, that's a metaphor for externalization, isn't it? On, 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 the, on its lowest level. Right. Do you imagine if we could externalize love like that, in, as we have the internet? Yeah. Well, yeah. we're seeing right now is just a dream a generation ago. Yeah, exactly. So we're making huge progress. Well, I'm greatly encouraged about what I see about the advancement of consciousness in my lifetime. Because I was born in 1938 and uh, things weren't anywhere near as they are now. And uh, I've been in these groups since 1969 and I'm, I know of, and I've been associated with them all around the world. And I see that we have to focus our attention on the good and that to which is really happening and get beyond the uh, discouragement of the appearances of things. <laughs> Steve, uh, may I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, uh, at this critical juncture in humanity, would selfish service be as effective as selfless service? Can you define selfish service? So, well, a service that would be uh, offered uh, for the personality's uh, enhancement, even though, it was, even though it was considered selfless. It may be humanitarian in effort, but the motives may be uh, of a selfish nature for self-aggrandizement, even though it is put forth as an uh, aid to humanity, as opposed to one who is totally selfless and coming from that, that uh, space. Just wondering what you might think. I, th I, think, I think all of us have a mixture of both, actually, don't we? I think it's by degree. I don't think, I don't think there's many people who, who are, in my observation, who are black or white. I think all of us sometimes do things for selfish motivation and sometimes we do things selflessly. But the fact is, what, what is, what is the energy which is going to level all that out? The leveling energy is karma. And the, as Buddha taught about intention is everything. And at the end of the day, our soul evolves through karmic energy. And you cannot fool it. So if your intention is to help for yourself in grandizement, then that will be repeated in your own karmic uh, ongoing lives. Uh, because it's the energy of karma, which is a completely different, uh, huge subject, uh, is dynamic and uh, will respond to love and will respond to the selfishness of the personality. So in some ways, how can we judge? In some ways, some people say Bill Gates is a, a selfless um, person, and some people on the internet I notice are saying he's he's almost like Lucifer incarnate, you know. So, so who is to, who who is to say what his intention is? Only his soul knows that, and you can't fool it, you can't buy it, and you can't change it. That's it. It's just what is. It is what is. Yeah. That's it.
is what it is, huh? <laughs> well, I would like to say, Steve, I really appreciate your intelligence and your remarks. I think um, at the end of the day, like you say, what's really going to change the planet is group consciousness. People working in small groups, triads, groups of 12, however you want to bring people together, but it's going to be the group that will hopefully be overshadowed by the Christ or one of his um, constituents that would uh, energize these groups to a place where they can make a real positive change in our planet and we, we will stand out and have a voice that will make a difference. I, I, think, I think that's an important point. I think actually the Christ energy, I think will work through all groups. Any group through, any, yeah, I, th I think you could be a group of, uh, of, of uh, you know, people who are playing chess in somewhere and, 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 they, and, they, and they have a minute before they play their chess club for world peace. I think they will be used too. I think the energy is, is, is positive from the hierarchy. It, it will come through any channel you give it, which is why I'm so keen on not, not being tied down to one particular philosophy or one particular political stance, because I think the energy will come through everybody who opens their heart to it. I don't, I mean, Christ is not a Democrat and Christ is not a Republican. Christ is a world teacher and leader. And he has no interest in, in secular politics. He's interested in love and goodwill and whoever responds to that teaching, he will use. Doesn't matter who you are, you know, if you're- So, so excuse me, so Steve, it, should we say that for groups to be effective in this work, do they need to balance their energies in a way that this sort of polarity is, uh, is dismissed? Because if a group um, is polarized, I mean, through internally, I mean, uh, some people are talking about Democrats and, and at the same time, looking at um, balancing the energy to bring about something that is positive. Will that be self-defeating? Should groups, first of all, work towards balancing this energy in a way that they become very effective in promoting both group consciousness that is able to disseminate the education about right to my relationship? I've been having this conversation with one of my colleagues here in Nigeria, and uh, I, 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 he, we don't seem to be agree because I completely take your point. And, because we are facing the same issues in Nigeria and everybody can talk about both Christians, Muslims, uh, elites and ordinary people as they're saying one thing, we need to come together to save the country. I mean, I mean, and it, that has same parallel with what is happening in the US and that has same parallel with what is happening in the world. And I have this friend who was talking about China and supporting America. I keep on telling him, look, neither America no, China is evil or good. Both of them are using the same energy and it's the, same, it's the way the energy is balanced. And therefore, is it, is it important that groups, even if when they talk about group consciousness, should they balance its energy in a way that they minimize this, this sort of polarization so that they become effective? It's, a, it's essential, Terry, isn't it? Because at the end of the day, and I, and I say, we, we talk about this in my, in my, in my, own, my own group, um, when you come to do the group work, please leave behind in a box outside the door all of your own personal issues. That's family, career, your political stance. We all have bias, all of us, every single, unless we're a master, we all have bias, you know? And we ask as much as can possibly be done that people set it aside. We're not asking them to lose it, I always say when I do meditations, or oh, you can pick it up later when you, when you leave the meditation if you wish. <laughs> Nobody else wants it. Um, but when you come to do the work, please set it aside, you know? Because then when you set it aside, you open the chalice to the hierarchy, don't you? You open to spiritual energy. If, if you go into a group wanting to push your bias one way or the other, for whatever political party or for whatever church or religion or, or whatever cultural, cultural thing you have, then you are not becoming an open chalice for service 
for hierarchy. So my, my observation over working with groups now for over 40 years is setting aside, please set it aside, pick it up later. And then when you do that, you come in as a sort of a, a negative charge, if you like. I'm not talking about negative energy, I'm talking about a negative charge. You come in ready to receive energy because the energy from the hierarchy is, is a positive energy and the energy of groups is, is negatively charged to receive that energy uh, in, into, into the planet. And so it's really important to do as you describe and to set aside all that and become a balanced group. And that's what DK talk, talked about in Dina. And he, he begged some of the people there, please leave that aside. You know, please do this or do that. And some did it and some didn't. And future group work is going to be like that. You know, it's a bit like a doctor doing an operation, you know, I mean, you, you don't want, a, if you've got, if you've got a, an operation on your heart, you don't want the doctor to be thinking about his shopping or thinking about who he's going to vote for on next, next election, do you? You want him focused exactly on, on your position laying on the table. And that's how groups should be, ideally, is that you're focusing on service work. And you, then you get the balance between the people in the group, in, in, in our group, in our group, it's 12 people. Uh, and you get that balance there. And, you, and in triangles, you get the balance of the three people. Uh, and that, that is the goal of all groups, I would suggest. And that is directly from the teachings in the Blue Books. Yeah. Okay, well, we really appreciate it. Uh, that's a good place to end right there on that note, I think. Okay, and, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, we really appreciate it. You've done a terrific job. And everybody give him a hand. You can't hear the hand, but... Yeah, we want to see you again, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> let's, let's you all... Yay. You, you, you <laughs> bless you all, and uh, let's just all get together and look to the light. Yeah, we'll have to look for ways to cooperate more. To, yeah, uh, we should. We should. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Mm. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Namaste. Thank you, Stephen. Thank Namaste. you. Namaste. 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 Thanks. Thank you. No, we go home, Renge Kyo.